Welcome back. I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog. I appreciate you joining me with this new format. I'm going to start releasing some of the content I've been developing for my Patreon page and my Patreon members a year ago. So if you like this content and you want to get it one year ahead, feel free to go over to my Patreon page and sign up for just as little as $8 a month. Of course, there's additional training available for system design, including manual D duct design and even 30 minute Zoom calls monthly, depending on the membership that you actually join with. So without further ado, I'm gonna actually play some of my first videos from one year ago. This one is around flexible duct design. If you like the content and you wanna sign up, I look forward to seeing you on the other end. First off, I want to uh, talk about how uh, flex duct needs to be installed fully extended. And this is why, all right? The compression rate, as long as it's within uh, 4% of fully extended, you're gonna use the normal friction rate when you design and size your ductwork. So if you don't pull that helix tight, then what ends up happening, just 15% compression will actually double your friction rate which obviously would mean you're gonna have too much pressure loss if you didn't size your ducts with double the friction rate. And typically if you double your friction rate, the duct work's gonna have to be a few sizes larger to get the same volume of air through. Unfortunately, what we typically see is guys don't pull that helix tight at all, and they have more like 30% compression rate, which actually will quadruple the friction rate. So that's why they're not getting air there. So this is right out of the um, Air Diffusion Council's flexible duct performance and installation standards. That's where a lot of these rules came from. They are without a doubt the authority when it comes to flexible design and installation. And I'm gonna give you a heads up on a great resource at the end of this webinar. So that way uh, you guys could get some free training and the resource free. So um, if you hang on to the end, you'll get uh, where to get that access, all right? So to pull that helix tight, they actually state you need to stretch to its fullest length at about 25 pound force for one minute in order to pull that helix all the way out and then you let it rest back to its normal size. So yes, if you don't have a tool or a way to secure this to the wall or something, it's gonna take two people. You, I would hope, have two people on the job site. So this should work if they do it right, all right? So number one, install ducts fully extended. Moving on to number two here. Um, and you're gonna see some funny pictures, stuff that we've seen in the past or have been used in trainings, but um, this is a tough one. I see this a lot when you have multiple levels in an attic or people are trying to run duct work up and over to leave floor space on the attic for storage, let's say. So do not bend across sharp corners of building materials like joists or beams or trusses, all right? Um, really, really important, um, it, particularly if it's not secured, you cannot use that joist to secure that 90 elbow, let's say, because it's gonna pinch the inside of the helix and it's really not secured, it's, it's not hung and it doesn't meet the IMC. So if you guys didn't know, uh, if you're working in states like Massachusetts, the sheet metal code uses the International Mechanical Code. Um, the most recent being 2015. They're actually going to be uh, uh, moving on to the 2018 soon. So I think most of the country is at least on the 2012 IMC, and that spells out ductwork installation, including um, minimums like hanging. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't specify flexible duct when it comes to that, and they still quote the ADC's uh, resource. So we're going to obviously be walking through those details here. All right, so no using joists or trusts to hang your ductwork. Um, another one that should be some common sense here, but you never know, that's why I got to include it. Um, you have to avoid incidental contact with metal fixtures like water lines or pipe or conduits, all right? You add that additional pressure onto that, uh, that water pipe, obviously it could cause a leak, that's one thing, right? But it'll start to degrade. If that's a steam pipe, let's say, it could ignite that, uh, that, that flex duct if it doesn't have a good rating or there's a tear in the vapor barrier, right? Um, also, it will start to transfer heat, which will create condensation because now the duct is below the dew point of the air. So all kinds of issues here, you have to keep it away from anything warm, and of course, if it's an air conditioner, obviously, um, and uh, anything that can't support the additional weight, okay? You don't wanna cause stress fractures or stuff on pipe. 
Um, another big one here, which actually, when it comes to flex duct, isn't much. So obviously you want to design ductwork using ACA Manual D, but the only reference to flex duct in Manual D is Appendix 17, and they state right at the beginning, it, this is just informative, it's not a part of the Manual D standard, but it does address things like excess length, sag, it really just points you back to the Air Diffusion Council's standard, all right? So there is a small, I'd say three or four pages in Appendix 17, just to run you through a couple examples of how improperly duct, uh, installed duct can cause issues when it comes to flex. Uh, if you do it right, it's not gonna be a problem. You have to do it right according to ADC standard. All right, so number five, you obviously need to use the manufacturer's air friction loss data to size flex. Um, most people just use the standard duct calculators that every manufacturer's rebrand and give out to everyone. Unfortunately, that's used just typically for uh, hard sheet metal, all right? So it's for rigid duct, it's not for flex duct. Now, if you pull it tight and you have less than 4% compression ratio on that duct, then it's probably the next size up. And that's just a, a personal experience using both duct calculators. You know, so if I was to do this and this sheet metal uh, run needs to be six inches, I would have to run seven inch flex. Now, if you use the ACA uh, flex, I'm sorry, the ACA duct calculator, the friction rate calculator, it has multiple wheels on it. One wheel will cover flex or some flex duct manufacturers will provide their version for you. So definitely if you do a lot of flex, make sure you're using the right duct calculator or know to add that additional size up in order to make that work, okay? Um, here's where we get to some fun stuff here. So number six, use minimum length of flex needed. Um, we see this on the left-hand side as a, a obvious problem, um, I would hope, but it's, it, it's typical because of rough in during new installations and then people put registers in afterwards and they don't cut the size of the flex that's roughed in. So when they do that, you actually add multiple issues. Um, first off, you know, you're talking about increasing equivalent length because of additional 45s and 90s here. Obviously, if you start compressing or twisting the helix inside, you're gonna increase the pressure loss. And then now that compression ratio is, is way too high and it increases the friction loss. So what that equates to is poor or no airflow to that register. It seems elementary, I hope it's elementary here, but we wanna remind uh, your install teams, uh, these have to be um, pulled tight, okay? So I'm gonna to get to 90s here in a second, but uh, make sure uh, that is less than 4% compression ratio, no excess flex. If you're gonna make a bend, the bend diameter, the radius, needs to be at least one duct diameter. All right, so you can see the picture here. If you have a six inch flex, that bend needs to be at least six inches in radius. So uh, I personally never made a bend when it came to flex. I always used a four or five piece 90 degree elbow because that, that way I made sure I was able to pull that helix tight. So what did you think? Did you like the rules I came up with based on the manufacturers of flexible ductwork and what they recommend for installation? If you did and you want to get the full video, head over to my Patreon page. If you like the content and you like this format, let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to continue to release these one year after I develop for my Patreon members. If you like it and you want to sign up and get a full year's worth ahead of time, it's available on my page right now. Go ahead and click the link below. Thanks again for joining me at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.